Hello everyone, welcome to K-Tips. Today we are going to talk about how to connect a MySQL database to a Java project. I'm working on Windows 11, and I'm going to use IntelliJ as my IDE. Because I don't have it installed yet, we first need to install it. The link to install it will be in the description below. We will also need to install MySQL and the MySQL Workbench. If you want to know how it works for PostgreSQL, let me know in the comment section. So, let's start. This is my desktop. I'm going to open my browser and search for MySQL. The first result is the official page, and here I will directly select the download section. I'll scroll to the bottom, where I have the MySQL Community GPL download. And here I select the MySQL Community Server. This is the link where I can choose the version I need and the operating system matching my working environment. I'm on Windows 11 so I'd like the latest version in Microsoft Windows as my operating system. I select the first installation package. And here I am asked if I want to sign up or log in. I don't need this for now, so I select the no thanks, just start my download option. The download has started. It sometimes takes 1 to 2 minutes. Once the download is finished, I can directly open the installation package and follow the instructions. I'm going to click on Next, accept the terms in the license agreement, and click Next again. Then, I will select the complete option to have all programs and features and start the installation. The installation is done for now. It's asking if I want to run the MySQL configurator. I want it, so it's already selected. I just click on Finish, and the configurator starts. It's asking if MySQL can make changes to my operating system. I click Yes, and the configurator begins running. I'll complete the installation here. On the welcome page, I click Next. Here, you'll see the data directory, which is where I'd like the server to run. I leave it set to the default path. On this page, I also leave all settings at their default values. Just remember the port where the server is running, for instance, here it's port 3306. Next, I set my root password and confirm it. I can also add a user, but I don't need this for now, so I'll be working as root. I click Next, and again, I leave everything set to default and click Next. At this point, it asks if I want to create sample databases. I select both options. From here, just hit Execute, and MySQL will start completing the tasks itself. As each task is executed, you'll see a green check mark on the screen, so you'll know how far along the process is. Once that's done, I click Next, and the configuration is completed.
At this point, we have MySQL installed on the system. You have two options here, you can run the MySQL command line, but I don't want to showcase this today. It asks for my password, the one I set previously, and now we can see that we're inside the MySQL shell. But as said, we are not going to use it. So instead, I'll introduce you to MySQL Workbench, it is the user interface for MySQL. For this, we are going to open a browser again and search for MySQL. I'll go directly to the download section and then to the MySQL community GPL downloads. This time, I'll select MySQL Workbench. There aren't many options to choose from here. The operating system is Windows again because we are working on Windows 11 and there is only one MSI installer. I'll just click on Download. Again, it asks to sign up or log in. I select No Thanks, just start my download. The download has finished now. Let's open the installer and follow the instructions. I'll directly click on Next and leave the installation path as the default. We're not going to change anything here, so I'll just click Next and leave the complete box checked to install the full features of the application. Then I will start the installation. It's asking for permission to make changes to my operating system. I select Yes. Once the setup finishes the installation, I'll leave the Launch MySQL Workbench Now option checked and click Finish. The workbench is now running on my computer. Here we see the welcome page. We already have the MySQL connection proposition. MySQL wants to connect to the local host on port 3306, the port we set previously. We'll use this directly. It asks for the root password we set earlier. Let's select Save the password and click Continue Anyway. That's it. This is the user interface. MySQL Workbench is a visual tool for managing MySQL databases. It allows you to design, develop, and administer databases using a user-friendly graphical interface. You can use it to run queries, create and manage tables, monitor performance, and more, without relying solely on command line tools. If you'd like a tutorial on how to work with the command line using the MySQL shell, let me know in the comments section, and I'll walk you through it. On this page, we have different configuration options, and we have the Administration tab at the bottom left. We also have schemas, where we can see the databases already created. During installation, we selected the option to create demo databases, and here they are. For example, we have the World Database. If we click on it and look at the tables, we'll find the City table. Clicking on the city table shows us its components. We also see a sample SQL query to select all data from this table. The result looks like this. We have the name, country, district, population, and the important first column ID. That's it.
We've installed MySQL and MySQL Workbench. Next, we'll install IntelliJ and learn how to connect this database to a Java application. For this, we'll also need a driver, which we're going to install. Thanks for sticking around and for your patience. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more tips. See you in the next video, happy coding and debugging with K-Tips.